I'm going to show you how to do a heel of a sock with fine gauge with fine gauge loom and this works for any sock that you're making on any size um, loom or fine gauge loom that you are using and here is the basic technique however many pegs you have divide it in half so with this one it's going to be 28 pegs you divide it in half and that way you know that you'll be working in between this half and it, it's up to you whether you're working this half or this half and typically I work this half because I I work left-handed I didn't realize I worked one-handed or another but I work left-handed and so I tend to do the heel on the left side but for instance like when I'm showing how to do the toe sock you're going to flip which way you do the heel to adjust for which foot goes on so it's as simple as that you you'll want to know how to do it on both sides but it's it's real basic if you if you've done any of my booty patterns then you've most likely done this before so to start off if you're doing 28 pegs as half your like half of my pegs is 28 what I'm going to do is I'm going to personally because I'm going to do the back half here I'm going to knit all the way around until just before my last peg so let's say that's my last peg for this back half on the 28 I'm going to knit over to here and stop so that I can wrap and turn that next peg okay I'm stopping just before my last one and with fine gauge and working with a finer yarn it, it works still the same as if you're working with the um, thicker yarn wider gauge that kind of thing you're going to hold on, one more you're going to wrap behind the peg and in front a wrap and turn and this is where you're going to start working back and forth and you're going to be working flat and the thing to keep in mind is you're going to stop just before the last wrap and turn that you did so this is my last wrap and turn well now I need to count over because mine's 28 pigs I'm going to count that as one and typically I put a stitch marker down but sometimes I don't so there's two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven and the next one should be twenty eight we're gonna stop at twenty seven we're gonna stop there and we're gonna wrap and turn that next peg so you're gonna wrap from behind back to front and stop and go the other direction and you're going to knit all the way to the other side until just before your last wrap and turn okay there's the last stitch I knitted there's the space before it there's an imp there's a single stitch there and there's my last wrap and turn so I stopped just before my last wrap and turn so you should have a peg with a single stitch that you haven't knitted before your last wrap and turn the reason being is so you can wrap and turn back to front that 
next peg and then you knit all the way back over to the other side. And you continue this process until you're down to however many single loops you need in between your wrap and turns. And I guide that on a drawn out on a piece of paper foot mold. And I go and I put the heel end in there and however many pegs it covers, which on the fine gauge it usually covers about uh, eight, nine pegs. And depending on however many pegs it covers is however many um, stitches you'll need in between your wrap and turns. So one more time showing you. Okay. So there's my last wrap and turn. Here's the last stitch that I knitted, which means there's a single stitch there that hasn't been knitted just before my last wrap and turn, which means we're going to wrap and turn that peg now back to front. Knit over and continue this process until you're down to however many pegs you need for your heel and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I have knitted down to nine um, stitches that are in between wrap and turns. And so I'll show you how that looks. You see all those wrap and turns. And how they exist in between single stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, see. And when I do my last wrap and turn, I always go to um, the peg before the peg that's right in front of my last wrap and turn. So there's my last wrap and turn and you can see I finished right there. And then you can see all my wrap and turns on this side. So you could say that this is half the heel. And by the way, this isn't just for heels. You can do this on a toe area if you wanted a toe up sock, I think is what they call it, and the rounded toe that fits rather than just a square toe. This is the same exact technique. And typically, however many you go down to on your heel, you do the same number on the toes on average. It can be adjusted. Again, it's the trace out the foot with the weight on it, cut it out, and that is the best guide for how many stitches in between the toe and the heel and however many you want and the ankle and everything it's it's really good to have the uh, the shape in so um, what we're going to do now to work the second half of the heel is we're going to go back the direction we came and we're going to start adding in one wrap and turn at a time so I'm going to knit over nine then there's my last wrap and turn I'm going to toss both loops over once I've tossed my wrap and turn over then I'm going to go back the other direction I'm going to go back this way and I'm going to toss those loops over and there's my last wrap and turn so I'm going to toss both loops over then I'm going to turn and knit the other direction and add in the next wrap and turn Go ahead and knit flat over to the next wrap and turn. There's 
There's my lash wrap and turn. So we're going to toss both loops over. And you do that all the way until you get to where you have no more wrap and turns. And then after that, it's just going back to doing your rows like normal. And so that is actually how you go in and you do the heel of um, a sock and the toe because it works the same way on the toe. That's how you do the heel and or toe if you want on a sock. And so it's as simple as a wrap and turn. So that's uh, another technique you can use on the flying gauge, but you can use it on any loom. I love that technique. I use it a lot. So um, yeah, that's how you do a heel or a toe.